This is a lens from a VR headset. And this is why you don't put your headset in the sun. Normally, that would be your screen burning. So these are the things to not do with your VR headset. There are all sorts of ways you could potentially ruin your VR experience, destroy your VR headset, or accidentally crush your kid's childhood with VR. But you can learn from my mistakes and the mistakes of others to make sure that you don't make those same mistakes. So let's start this one off with that giant ball of gas 94 million miles away. I think we all know by now that the sun is a deadly laser, not just mutating your genes, but also incredibly dangerous to your treasured VR headset. Just like a magnifying glass, the internal lenses of your headset can focus the sun's beams and literally burn your display. It's already happened to thousands of people before, and it can happen very quickly, sometimes even with sun through a window. You don't even need direct sunlight. And I don't know about you, but having a big burn spot in the middle of my virtual reality doesn't sound very immersive. However, don't be too scared. I do want to clear up some very common misconceptions real quick regarding the sun and your headset. You can actually take your headset into direct sunlight. There's no problem with it. These cameras on the Quest 2 or Index will not be damaged. They're just cameras. When we talk about sun damage and lenses, we're only talking about the internal lenses, the ones you look through. Any other lenses on the headset, you don't have to worry about. So basically, don't put your headset's lenses into direct sunlight. Do, however, protect your lenses with a simple lens cover or even a sock, or <laughs> just use your face. Next up, while we're talking about lenses, most of the time, these little things are plastic and probably the most vulnerable part of any VR headset. But they're also arguably the most important component, the thing that allows you to see virtual reality at all. So don't scratch your lenses, obviously. Which this may seem offensively obvious. I mean, I can't imagine somebody ever purposely, you know, scratching their lenses. Don't worry. I'll fix that. But it's really easy to do, and it's an easy way to destroy a perfectly good VR headset. So again, be extra conscious of your lenses and what's happening to them. Do use a case while traveling and throw on a lens protector or sock while you're at it. Most people actually scratch the lenses because they're using glasses. So if you wear glasses, maybe invest in a prescription lens cap or protective lens cap so that these get scratched and not this. But in case this does happen, it's not the end of the world, here's like one of the best tips ever. There's a paste called Polywatch you can buy almost anywhere online. A dab of that and a couple minutes of buffing and your lenses will be almost as good as new, but like I said, it's not the end of the world if it does happen. Now, there are a few big things to cover on hardware, but let's take a break and talk about software. I thought this was kind of a given, but a scary circumstance that a friend of mine just went through made me realize not everybody knows about this. Basically, my friend had his entire catalog log of PC VR games purchased on the Oculus Store. He then recently changed his name on Facebook and was banned for no reason. And in the course of that, he lost his entire three-year-old VR library with, I don't know, dozens of titles. So don't buy your PC VR games on the PC Oculus Store, with a few exceptions, of course. Exception one, well, if the game is an Oculus exclusive, that's kind of the only place you can buy it. So either buy it or don't. Up to you. You. Luckily, there are only a few of those. Unfortunately, they're actually really good games. They're just platform exclusive, which sucks. And exception two, it's okay to buy on the PC Oculus Store if the game is cross-buy. Meaning you buy it on PC, you also get the Quest standalone version and vice versa. Any other time, what you should do is buy your PC VR games on Steam. Biggest reason here, at least for the foreseeable future, Steam VR supports all VR headsets. Oculus Store, well, officially, only meta headsets. If you ever swap VR headsets to a different manufacturer, it's going to be quite a pain to get those games to run on other VR headsets. And in some cases, you may not be able to at all. And another bonus is, in case anything weird ever happens again and people's Oculus libraries just start disappearing, which actually did happen for like two weeks, at least you'll still have all of your Steam games. Okay, and now the hardware stuff. We got to talk about something I am totally 
actually guilty of, resulting in me breaking not one, not two, but three Valve indexes over three years. And it has to do with these, VR cable pulley systems. Basically, you rig your VR headset's wires on a system of pulleys so that the wire is suspended and nearly weightless. Then there's nothing to trip over, your range is extended, and it allows you to be way more comfortable in VR. It's as close as you can possibly get to a wireless PC VR headset without giving up the benefits of a wired setup. But if you have your pulley set up incorrectly, your VR headset will die in early death. There's no question about it. The problems will start small with very occasional headset fuzz outs or disconnections, usually lasting only a couple of seconds before everything recovers, but it will eventually end with what I like to call the starry screen of death. Most people, when setting up a pulley system, have their system set up way too tight, meaning that for the hundreds of hours you spent throwing back cold ones with the boys in VR chat or ruthlessly tormenting NPCs in Blade and Sorcery, your cable and connector is receiving way more stress than it was designed to take, and over time will destroy your headset. The biggest problem here is that the pulley system adds stress to the tether and connector. Doesn't matter if you're on a Rift or Quest or Index or Vive, these headsets were designed to have a cable that doesn't have vertical tension on it 24-7. So here's what you can do at least until we get a super high quality wireless headset that replaces our index. When setting up your pulley, leave plenty of slack. Not so much that it gets in the way of your movements, but you don't want to have it super tight. Then I actually like to tape or zip tie my cable to the back of my headset so that more tension and friction is on that section of the cable than the connector. I can replace a cable. I can't really replace the connector on a headset's PCB. Pulley systems are awesome, and I'll use one for as long as I have a cable, but if you don't set one up correctly, you'll be wearing your VR headset down significantly faster. And next up, we got the dirtiest of the bunch. Say you have a favorite hat. You wear this hat every day for at least an hour. Well, after wearing this hat for everything, working out, partying, chilling, you can imagine, it probably stinks and is just filled with bacteria. Months of sweat, face and head oils and skin, well, this hat is no different from your VR headset, and your VR headset may be even worse. Think of that the next time someone offers for you to try their headset, or the next time you offer to let someone else use yours. I think sometimes we kind of forget that a headset, at the end of the day, is a wearable. So don't let months go by without giving your headset and interface a nice good clean. There are a few big things here that you need to clean. The interface and head strap are the two things that make direct contact with your head and tend to be the two things that soak up the most sweat. So removing them for a solid clean every month or so should be a regular occurrence. And sorry if this grosses any of you out, but there's usually a lot of skin buildup, usually in the eye cup areas. So do make sure you stay on top of keeping your wearables nice and clean. Your skin, nose, and everybody else's will thank you, and your headset will probably thank you as well. Okay, and now safety. We'll talk about an even more important aspect of safety in a moment, but of course there's the whoa, physical whoa, play space whoa. safety. You're in VR. You're practically blind to all of your surroundings. This is a prime setup for all sorts of mishaps. And this one is super easy. Make sure your play space is safe so that you don't get hurt and your stuff doesn't get destroyed. If you have a 60 inch TV against the wall in your VR play space, you should probably set your play space to be a foot or two away from that TV because at some point you will, and I mean this, you will get so immersed in VR that you'll completely forget where you're at in your room. And this is when the bad things happen. You think you're going in for a clean right hook and bone works when in reality, you just put an Oculus controller sized hole in your OLED TV. This sounds simple, but care for your play space. It's the cocoon that keeps you safe while in VR. Keep it clean, trip hazard free, and breakable free. Pretty much just make your space toddler friendly. Also, if you do need help orienting yourself in VR, a single fan does a tremendous job for both play space awareness and motion sickness. But there's a lot more to safety than physical safety. And this this is a big one, maybe the biggest one. Virtual reality is a beautiful, endless abyss of creations from people around the world. It's as inclusive and shame-free as you can possibly get. 
But please, if you didn't listen to any of what I just said, please listen to this one. Things like VRChat are not safe places, especially for children. Would you let your kid walk around the strip in Vegas at nighttime and randomly pop into some strip clubs? I'm guessing probably not. And if that was a yes, then, uh, well, <laughs> you got bigger problems. But if that was a no, also don't let your kids randomly wander around social VR because when you go down the wrong rabbit hole of worlds, uh, this is probably where you'll end up. There are places and pockets of social VR that are totally fine for kids, even meant for kids. But what this whole section requires really is parental supervision. Don't just slap a VR headset on your kid and figure you got a really cheap babysitter because just like in real life, there are bad people in VR too. And unlike a chat room or flat screen game, VR is a little different. With realistic body presence and body language, the social aspects of VR are extremely close to real life. There are lots of great people, but just to be totally honest, VR chat and most of VR is just flat out not safe for young children to wander in freely without supervision. We've already seen some of the fallout from this in news articles or even fallouts in communities, but seriously, it's just not a safe place. Do watch what your kids are doing in VR. I think a lot of parents are just really out of touch with technology and they'll say, oh, it's just a game, which is pretty wrong in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is just a game. I mean, you could just take it off. But your 15-year-old daughter interacting with a 24-year-old dude in VR chat every night isn't just a game anymore. That's uh, jail time and a seriously traumatizing experience, and you can stop that from happening. Just watch what your kids are doing in VR, please. Whew, okay, well, after a few thousand hours of taking in the culture and environment of VR, these are some of the things that I've learned of what not to do with your VR headset and also what to do with it. VR is all about having fun and enjoying a new immersive medium, meeting new people and getting lost in the virtual world. So hopefully with these tips, you have a safer, more joyful time in VR and hopefully your headsets will last a little longer and are cleaner. <laughs> or of course, you could just disregard everything I said and break grandma's vase again up to you. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this one. I've got lots of cool content coming on the way that I'm really excited about, including water cooling the Quest 2 again, but this time overclocking it, something you also should not do with a VR headset. Like, seriously. So if you want to see the next string of videos from me, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell and join up in my Discord community to see my latest video releases and also chat there as well. I do want to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for helping me make content like this. I couldn't do any of this without you. So until next time, have a good rest of your day. Much love. Grill out.